Hello and welcome to the third uh, beta version 4.0 video. This video I'm going to talk about nothing but namespaces. Uh, so namespaces are a net new feature in HiByte version 4. The purpose of namespaces is a lot of times we would see customers start to put ISA 95 hierarchy definitions directly in their models. And A, it was fairly limiting. B, it didn't make a lot of sense. And C, we just felt like there's got to be a better way to do this. So that is really where namespaces came from. You can think of namespaces as like folder hierarchy on your operating system. Like I want to visually lay out uh, some kind of hierarchy definition of where my data is. And a lot of times it's going to model logically how you think of your factory or your plant. Um, so I can kind of lay that out outside of modeling give it some context, and then the really cool part of namespaces is what we call smart query, which is the ability to take the whole namespace or parts of it and pull, pull it out to use it in pipelines. And I'll show that that whole thing. So by default, you click namespaces, there's, there's nothing there. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of build out that folder hierarchy like I had mentioned. So let's say Portland, and I've got some conveyor models I was using in the previous demo. And here I'm just going to... Um, lay this out. And really think of this as ISA 95 hierarchy, right? I did site, area, line, the machine. And when I got down to conveyor, I'm going to link that to conveyor one. And then I'm also going to go back up and create a line two. And I'm going to link that to, I'm going to create also a conveyor there. And I'm going to link that conveyor to uh, conveyor two. Now this whole UI is very minimal, it's very basic, right? We're gonna spend some time probably adding drag and drop to make this more intuitive, but think of this as I laid out hierarchy and then I got it to a certain place in the node and I assigned it to a value. That value can either be a modeled thing, like an instance or a direct input that's coming from another source. So I think like drag and drop into the tree might make that more clear that this is conveyor one, conveyor two, but we'll, we'll kind of figure that out as we approach release. Uh, but for beta, once this is in here, I can then go read any node in this tree, and you'll see you'll get JSON back that represents that hierarchy and then the data that's that's in there. So I can go into HiByte and I can logically see, here's my factory, here's how it's mapped to the data I've modeled, and then I have the kind of the full context. So what can I do with it? The first thing, the most logical thing to do initially is to say, okay, well, I want to take this whole thing. This looks pretty much like an MQTT topic space, uh, and I want to send that out to MQTT. So what I'm going to do is I'll go jump in a pipeline and we'll build that out real quick so you can see how that, that works. So create a new pipeline. It'll be poll based. I'll turn that on. I want to turn on tracking right away because you'll be able to see kind of how the data is transforming. And then the first stage I'm going to add is a smart query stage. So this is the new stage. It's highly functional, but it's it's hard to understand when you first approach it. There's a lot of configuration options. So we're going to smooth that out as we approach release. The best place to learn about this right now is in the dev version of the guide. If you go there, there's lots of examples of the different transforms and how it can read data out of the, the namespace in different ways. So I would encourage you to, to check that out. But the way to think about this is it's almost kind of like SQL-esque, but it uses a technology called JSONATA. JSONATA is a way to index into JSON objects. There's a link up at the top of the guide to kind of show some of the syntax and how that works. But you can almost think of it as we're building a JSON document and then using the JSONATA syntax to allow you to pull pieces of that of the whole thing or kind of index into it. So by default, you'll see this high byte namespace. Everything I'm about to show you, the queryability and all that, will unlock on our full namespace. So you can do it direct on inputs. You don't have to do it on you know, this is the namespace we just created, but for the purpose of this demo, and as we kind of un unwind the feature, um, we're going to start with the namespace we created. So I'm going to type in Portland shipping dot double asterisk. And what this means is I want to get everything under Portland shipping from this point on, and it's all its child hierarchy. So all that's going to be part of the from query, and I'll add that in. The where clause, similar to where clause in SQL, it allows me to control... I only want things that are typed conveyor, or I only want things that have a speed that are over 1,000. I'm not going to use this initially, but we'll come back and see it. Select allows me to pick what parts of the data that I want. Locator uh, is actually the path in the namespace where the thing exists. So actually, I'm going to want that, and I also want value. Delimiter, when we build out the path, you can control the delimiter. By default, it's a dot. In this case, I'm going to send MQTT, so to make my life easy, I'm going to change that to a 
forward slash. Uh, and then the as is probably one of the more powerful parts of this where you can control the shape. So I can either grab the whole thing as a JSON document, or in this case, what I'm going to do is select list, which list means everything you find in there that meets my query, I want an array of all those things. I want each one to be an array element. And I'm actually going to break that up so I can send it up, send it out over uh, MQTT as a separate topic. And I'm going to submit that. And there's two things I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I need I, I need to write it out to MQTT, so I'm going to create a write stage. I'm going to select the MQTT connection, and for the topic, I'm going to do event.metadata.topic, and I need to go define this. This doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to dynamically define the topic from the namespace itself. Save that, and then to get that to work, uh, there is a slight transform stage I need at the moment. So from the smart query. I'm going to transform. You'll see in the replay the attribute I want to send over the wire is actually called value. So I want to re, I want to index into that to set the value and stage set metadata capital M uh, topic. This is what we just defined. I want that to be event dot value dot locate locator. I think yeah. And we'll see, you'll see what that looks like in the replay. Okay, so I'm going to go into replay. It looks like I configured this correctly. If you look at a replay event, specifically, you'll see that when we do the smart query, the result that comes out of the smart query is actually two, two, uh, two events, right? One event for conveyor one, one event for conveyor two. So you'll see, if you look down at the metadata, Actually, not the metadata. This data, you'll see the locator. This is line one, uh, and this is line two. I break that up. I'm renaming this topic and putting it in metadata so it doesn't get sent out over the wire, and then I'm writing that over MQTT. So then, by magic, if I launch the MQTT or the UNS client, and I connect in, you'll see one for one, right? And this is the beauty of namespaces. I laid it out here, I set up a simple pipeline, and I see exactly what I set up out here. Now, to show you the power of this, I could jump in and I'm going to change this query to say, and again, this is in the guide, but I actually want a list of every single attribute I want out of some topic, so I'm going to set it to this, and we'll see what happens. We did this so that array, instead of those arrays being of conveyors, now those arrays are of every attribute in the conveyor, and every attribute just became its own topic. Do you want to do that? Maybe not, but if you do, that's, that's pretty slick. Uh, it's pretty easy, right? So again, we need to kind of repackage how we present this to make it a little more consumable, but functionally, extremely powerful. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief. The last thing I want to show you is just the where clause. So if I jump in here, in the where clause, I can, I'm going to copy it out of here. I can start to control from that select what I grab. So, for example, I can say uh, where the model is equal to conveyor, right? In this case, it's a lowercase conveyor. That's my model definition. I actually think the quotes from the guide are wrong. I'm going to have to go fix those. But this, has, this will have no functional change in the namespace because everything in there was a conveyor anyway. But if I went into... Uh, the namespace, for example, and I added some junk. Oops, I'm just going to call this a junk node, and I'm going to turn it into a reference input OPC. So I'm going to assign this some random OPC. Let's call it garbage. And that's part of my namespace now, but that's not appearing in my output. Well, why is that? It's because I set that where clause. So if I got rid of this where clause, and I went back to getting everything, you would see that junk node automatically shows up in the namespace. But because of the where clause was filtering on conveyors, uh, that doesn't happen. And there is an and syntax, I think. Yeah, we can do it here. So we're going to filter on conveyors and um, value.speed greater than 1,000. So not only can you can you can filter on metadata, you can filter on the data too, which is more expensive, right? We have to go read that value and do this computation. So you'll see the timings 
on the refreshes are going to take a little longer, 34 milliseconds. I guess we're reading it all anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but in any case, if we go back here, I think all the speeds are above 1,000. So they're at 6,000. But if I change this query to Uh, let's say 10,000, nothing should enter the namespace then, right? Because nothing meets that requirement. And this is going to look like a failure. I think this is a bug in beta where if the where clause filters out everything, it looks like an error. It's not. It really just means that nothing met that requirement. There's way more to show, but I'm already, I'm already at 10 minutes. Um, so this is a really cool feature. Namespaces is an opt-in feature, right, where you don't have to use namespaces, but it's a really cool way to organize your modeled information. And then again, that smart query, as we kind of unfold this functionality, is a way to easily query parts or the whole of that and send it wherever you need to. So maybe that's MQTT, maybe that's um, Snowflake. You, know, you can create workflows like give me every conveyor that's in an alarm state and send that to Snowflake. Those are tools and technologies, techniques that you don't have in like native MQTT, for example, over a topic structure. So really cool functionality. We're pretty excited. Give it a shot in the beta and uh, send us your feedback.